just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just want to say thank you, God, for this day, for this hour, God. For God, you're making a way, God, when it seemed to be no way, God. We just want to say thank you, God. God, for you being better to us than we've been to ourselves, God. God, we just want to say thank you. And Father, there are some things, God, that we took for granted, God. We apologize, God, right now, God, for not saying thank you, God. God, you're so worthy, God. You're so awesome and you're so faithful, God. And Father, we love you, God, because you first loved us, God. Thank you, Lord for being the air that we breathe, God. Just thank you, Lord, for waking us, God, and giving us active use of our limbs. God, we just say thank you, God, for clothing us in our right mind, God. We just want to say thank you, God. Father, you have kept us, God. God, as we look back over our life, God, we need to tell you thank you, God because you have really kept us God time and time again God you've, you've kept us God we shouldn't have made it God but you kept us God and Father even as the psalmist said if it had not been for the Lord on our side we would have been swallowed up but God we escaped God because of your mighty hand and your mighty power, God. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, who's making intercession for us night and day, God. We just say thank you. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit right now. And Father, as we get ready to enter into your word, God, we pray that you will have your own way, God. God, you have your way, God. You say what needs to be said, God. You be glorified in this place, God. Father, use your earthen vessel, God. Have me to speak with great grace and great power, God. Have me to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Cause your face to shine upon my countenance, God. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. And it's in Jesus' mighty name. Let us all say amen, amen. I just want to tell you good morning. Amen. This is a good day to be alive. Amen. This is a good day to be alive. No, it's not a good day. It's a great day. Amen. We're going to uh, ask the ushers. Amen. Brother Ray hey, has something for all of us this morning. Amen. He's asked the brothers to hand to us. Yes. We serve an awesome God. We serve a wise God. I was listening to the the songs and just listening to how God was putting it all together. And that's one thing about God. If we can trust him, he can put it all together. We quote it for we know that all things work together. We quote it, but sometimes we don't trust him like that. Amen. Make sure everybody has one. Give, amen. I have one. Amen. I'm glad y'all are reading what's in your hands. Amen. Amen. We have a. <laughs> God.
God is so good. How, how many uh, in here has ever been to an airport? Raise my, amen, I see my, uh, now I won't, uh, this may switch or change the, the number of hands are raised because I saw my wife raise her hand. Uh, how many by the short of hands have ever flown on a plane? Amen. 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 And, and I know y'all see that my wife has put her hand down. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bible, uh, I'm going to ask you to turn to uh, two different uh, passages of Scripture. Amen. And you can use this for your bookmark or whatever you do, I want you to keep it. Amen. I want you to keep it. I want you to look at it and uh, pray the Lord will explain this boarding pass to us before we go home. Amen. Habakkuk, the second chapter, amen, the, the second verse and the third verse, amen, that's, that's one of the ones you got to, it might be best for you to go to the beginning of the New Testament and go back left, amen, you know, I knew I had to preach it, so I got my tassel there, one of them little old books back there. Habakkuk, the second chapter. Amen. And if you can't find it, Brother Ray has found it for us. Amen. Amen. Uh, it begins reading at the second uh, verse in the second chapter like this. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Uh, that he may run that, not that read it, but that readeth it. Uh, the third verse, uh, for the vision, and I was listening to Minister Leonard. She said, Lord, we want to have your vision. We want to see like you see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Uh, the Message Bible reads like this. And then God answered, write this. Write what you see. Write it out in big block letters mm -hmm. so that it can be read on the run. Uh, the vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait. And it doesn't lie. If it seems slow in coming, wait. It's on its way. It will come right on time. Uh, this, this small book uh, is written by the prophet Habakkuk. Uh, and Habakkuk's name has uh, two separate meanings. Uh, one of the meanings is embrace. Amen. And that word there means to accept or support amen and Habakkuk is talking about a vision and brother gamble when a vision is released you either can accept it and by embracing it and support it uh, but he also has a, another uh, meaning to his name and it means to wrestle mm-hmm mm yeah yeah 
and and as I meditated on this, uh, just Habakkuk's name, you know, I didn't write or give meaning to his name, nor did I name him, but it means to embrace or to wrestle. The word wrestle means to struggle or go against. Mm -hmm. uh, so when there is a vision, say vision, there will always be embracers and those that struggle with vision. Uh -huh. uh, God tells Habakkuk uh, to write it. That word in the Hebrew means kathab, K-A-T-H-A-B. That definition is record the vision. Uh, describe the vision. And when he says describe, he's saying uh, give an account in words or tell or write it in spoken words. Mm -hmm. uh, and I need you to turn to uh, Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, and we'll go ahead on to this boarding pass that uh, Brother Ray has made at Destiny Airlines. Mm-hmm. We are changing the name this morning, so don't nobody get upset uh, for the purpose of the message. Today we're not at Hope, we're at Destiny Airlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even at Hope, you ought to know that Hope ought to be Destiny Airlines. Uh, Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, I'm going to begin reading at the 10th verse. I told Brother Ray the 11th, but it begins reading like this. It says, For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit, I will visit, that means come and see about you and spend time with you. I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go, and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Not with part of it, not sometime, but yeah. with all your heart. Yeah. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I will turn away your captivity. Ooh, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places, whether I have driven you, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I will bring you again unto the place whence I cause you to be carried away captive. Uh, the Message Bible reads like this. Y'all might as well get used to this old Message Bible. This is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon 70 years are up and not a day before, I'll show up and take care of you as I promised. And bring you back home. Here comes the good news. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Th th this God talking, but Jeremiah is just being the spokesman. He said, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you. Not to abandon you. Plans to give you, listen to this, the future you hope for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
plans to give you the future you hope for. Uh, I'm going to continue reading. I asked uh, Sister Trinice this morning uh, back there at the sound booth. I said, uh, what are you going to college for? And she, she, she said something, and she told me that the field was in criminology. And, and all he's saying is, I plan to give you the future you hope for. Y'all right. may have not gotten it right there, but, 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 but what he's saying is, I know your desires mm -hmm. and what you plan to accomplish. Mm -hmm. He said, I have plans to give you the future yeah. that you hope for. Yeah. He said, when you call on me and when you come and pray to me, mm -hmm. I'll listen. Mm -hmm. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious. I'm, I'm going to read that again just in case it, th that ain't what they say. When you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. God's decree. I'll turn things around for you. Good Lord have mercy. I bring you back from all the countries into which I drove you. God's decree. Bring you home to the place which I sent you off into exile. You can count on it. Uh, if, if, if I can use for a title uh, today, uh, Can I look back and see what this man done put up here? <laughs> hey, I gave him two choices. Ray, put it up there for me, please. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I didn't. <laughs> Lord. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I'm headed to my destination. Y'all know they ain't hiring no pilot mouth look like that. <laughs> I'm heading to my destination. I'm heading to my destination. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm heading to my destination. Uh, destination, uh, Webster defines it. Uh, like this, the place where someone or something is going or being sent. The place where someone or something is going or being sent. Uh, or, or, or you can uh, say, I'm headed to my destined place. Uh, the word destined means uh, developing as according to plan. Developing, that's a progressing word. She talked about the caterpillar and the butterfly. That's a developing thing. Uh, a plan is a step-by-step -step proposal for accomplishing an objective. Uh, Psalms 37, 23 uh, says a good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. Uh, Jeremiah uh, here uh, has a hard task. Mm -hmm. uh, God has called Jeremiah uh, to be a prophet in uh, a strange time, even like right now. And if you read uh, the entire chapter of Jeremiah 29, uh, Jeremiah had to say something different than what the other prophets were saying at that time. Uh, uh, God had told them uh, that they were going to be in captivity for 70 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but, somebody say but. Uh, mm, just for this purpose today, uh, the parking lot prophets, yeah, uh, begin to pull uh, God's people aside and begin to tell them that, no, you ain't going to be here that long. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
yeah, yeah. They done heard what God told Jeremiah to say, but you always, uh, Sister Leonard, have in every house, in every house, in every ministry, you have parking lot prophets or prophetess. Yes, you do. Uh, uh, that um, are not stationed there to uh, release the word to the congregation, but they're stationed there to help support the vision. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they don't like what's being released, so what they'll do, they will find uh, people in the parking lot and they'll tell them, Brother Gamble, what they want to hear. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and most parking lot prophets, yeah, are really trying to raise their ministry up mm, on the same grounds, but they want to do it outside, out of order. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't in the notes, but, but, but let me uh, tell you what you got in your hand. Uh, you, you have a boarding pass. Yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you need a boarding pass to get to your destined place, Lord have mercy. And, and the airlines, uh, uh, Brother Ray and I, me, we, we call them Destiny Airlines. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I found out that when you are traveling uh, by a plane, that you will need a boarding pass, Lord have mercy. And, and we gave everybody their boarding passes. And, and as Habakkuk said, we wrote the vision down so that you can read it. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and yeah, yeah. We went to Orlando. We went to Orlando. Me and Sivy, I want to, I want, Lord, I want to go scripture by scripture. We went to Orlando with Freddie uh, when he had to go to the Peach Bowl. And, and, and we found out some things about the airport. And, and we, 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 we put it in our navigation system. We got off the right exit and, and Freddie just riding back there. We say, Freddie, you need to tell us uh, who you're flying with. Mm -hmm. because they got Trans Am, they got this, they got that. And he said, Daddy, I'm flying Delta. And so I, I, I got off on the Delta exit, and, and we went and parked, and, and we went and parked. We found out some things uh, that, that Freddie, in all his flying, he still didn't really know how to fly. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, Brother Errol, we, we, we got him out, and he had this paper from he He purchased his own ticket, yeah, because the team said they gave him, the, they, they gave him leeway. They said, you can come home, but you got to get your own ticket, and you need to be in Atlanta at a certain time. Lord have mercy. And, 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 and so he, he picked this ticket out, and, and when he got his ticket, uh, he had this paper all folded up in his bag, yeah, just all balled up, and, and he said, so what I do now? And, and I'm in the airport, like, all these times you done flew, you don't know what to do? He said, no. He said, this is how we do it, Lord have mercy. He said, at Florida State, uh, they tell the team to meet to the school. Mm -hmm. And he said, all the players have a time to, to meet at the school. And he said, uh, we have a Florida State bus that, that takes us to the airport yeah 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 and he said we don't have nothing called departure time no no he said that plane is there just for florida state they say it can't leave until all the players get on and i say so y'all drive out there he say we go right out there to the airplane yeah yeah and and and, and so we're out there and i'm looking at this boy and, and i say you need to take your ticket that you're printed off and you need to take it to the counter, yeah, yeah. And so he took it to the counter and they asked for his identification. Lord, talk to us. And once he got his identification out, they printed him out a boarding pass. Yeah, yeah. And he said, Daddy, what I do with this? I said, that's going to get you on your plane. And he looked at me and he did this because he wasn't used to that. And, and I say, you need that, put it in your hand. And, and, and he said, what about my bags? I say, well, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, Florida State not flying this plane. Uh, uh, so you're going to have to pay for those bags. Yeah. And, and he say, how much? I say, Fred, I'll pay for your bags. And, and you know they give a charge. And he said, I'm going to carry this one on the plane with me. And, and so, so he got his stuff. And he said, 
what do I do now? Mm -hmm. And and me and Sylvia looked at the board and passed, yeah. And it said uh, the flight number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We intentionally put, yeah, because we need you to read uh, and we need you to know what flight you're flying on this morning. Yeah, yeah. You're flying on flight 57 this morning. Yeah, yeah. Why, preacher? Well, there was a movie uh, in 1992. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I know Brother Era already know. There was a man by the name of Bruce Payne and Wesley Snipes. Yeah, yeah. And, and Wesley happened to be passenger 57. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but, but so you can understand a little bit about this five and seven because I'm not going to push Wesley. I'm going to push Jesus. Uh, the number five, uh, yeah, represents grace. The number seven is God's perfect number. Mm -hmm. And the number of God's completion. Yeah, yeah. When you're walking up under God's grace, you'll understand that God is going to bring this thing to completion. Yeah, yeah. That's why we on flight 57 because we need his amazing grace and we need him to complete this flight yeah yeah, yeah. philippians says it like this you can be confident in this very thing that he that has begun a good work that he will perform it he will complete it that means if you've loaded up on this plane that destiny allies you can be confident that you're gonna have a safe arrival that don't mean that it ain't gonna get bumpy but i'm trying to tell you because who's your pilot and who's your co-pilot you're gonna make it to that place yeah yeah so you know Freddie. yeah yeah you know hope now that you're at destiny airlines you know that uh what flights you're on now i need to tell you what gate you got to go to yeah 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 your gate is H. That represents hope. Mm -hmm. The 5209, I know you ought to know by now after 10 years, that's your address here. Yeah, 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 yeah. The gate you need to show up at, Lord have mercy, is 5209. Yeah, Smith Wires Road. How you going to travel? You're going to travel first class. Why you going to travel first class? Because he paid for it with his blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now you need to know your departure time and you need to know your arrival time. Uh, I found out that the departure time is not necessarily what's on your ticket. The departure time is when the plane backs up away from the gate. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times we think just because we own the plane that is departure time. No, it's not departure time, Sister Colleen, until you back up away from the gate. Yeah, yeah. You got to really trust God. Yeah, yeah. You got to really trust the allies to load up in a plane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and let me share a few things that I found out about flying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because we need to fly today. Uh, everybody can't fly the plane. <laughs> no. You got to be trained to become a pilot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brother Gam, I'm, I'm going to ask you and uh, uh, Brother Eric to, to say amen today because uh, we, I might not get too many more. <laughs> a, 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 a pilot or captain uh, usually uh, yeah, sits in the cockpit. No, I feel something behind me. I ain't, no, no. Look back here. A pilot uh, and a co-pilot usually sit up in the cockpit. A pilot must have good communication skills. Uh-huh. He has to be able to uh, not only talk, but he has to be able to listen, Lord have mercy. Yes, yes. He has to be in tune to ATC. What's that? Air traffic control. Yes, yes. 
he has to uh, not be caught up with what's going on up under him, but he needs to know what's going on over him, Lord have mercy. And so he's not worrying about what the people talking about behind him because he has to stay in tune with air traffic control. Yeah, yeah. And so every now and then, yeah, you may see the pilot back there. He may wear some earphones. Yeah, yeah. It's not that uh, he don't want to hear you. He want to make sure he's hearing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. A pilot must have uh, good team working skills. Oh, yeah. He must have the ability to think quickly and to make decisions at difficult times. Lord have mercy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you really want to lead? Yeah. Yeah. You got to be able to think quickly and to make difficult decisions all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. They must uh, also remain calm when up under pressure. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, as he flies and get higher and higher, the pressure gonna change. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The higher he goes, the pressure is gonna change. And, and as he's going higher and higher, he's gonna know I need to make decisions not for me, but I got to make decisions for my passengers. Lord have mercy. Uh huh. A pilot must have good leadership skills. Yeah, yeah. How do you get good leadership skills? Well, it happens like this. You have to first, or you need first to have good followership skills. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole lot of people that want to be leaders but never follow nobody. Lord have mercy. Yeah, but to become a pilot, you have to be, Lord have mercy, you got to be willing to train and submit up under the aviation school. Yeah, you can't just go in there and say, I know how to fly. No, you got to submit to the rules of flying. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And see us, because we're going on a journey and we're not just going to stay here. We're not just going to be those people that just show up at the airport and, and watch the planes go off. No, no. We're not going to be watching other ministries and we ain't going nowhere. We're going somewhere. We need to learn how to fly. And in flying, let me tell you something, uh, over there in Tampa or in Orlando, you watch that big old plane and it looked like nothing is holding it up. You know what's holding it up? The awesome power of God. Yeah, yeah. And for us to get to the place that God is calling us, we got to be held up by the awesome power of God, his anointing, his, his words. And the pilot must also be able, he must need to be able to give clear commands to the passengers and to the cabin. Yes. yes. Uh, clear commands. In the cockpit, the pilot usually sits on the left, mm -hmm. and the co-pilot is on the right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most pilots don't tell you everything. Yes. Yes. No, no, they don't tell you everything. Uh, as I studied it, yeah, I know we in Jeremiah. I promise we'll, we'll talk about Jeremiah. Uh, most pilots uh, don't tell you uh, their background. Mm -mm. Most pilots don't walk out in the plane and introduce themselves to you. Yeah. And they definitely don't tell you that it's easier to drive a plane than it is to drive a car. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I know that sounds crazy. And the reason uh, it is is because there's a button. Somebody said there's a button called co-pilot. <laughs> and, and that's when he pressed a button and the plane just began to soar. And every now and then he got to touch it so it'll stay on course. And, and, and I, I, I know you're probably wondering right now. I know it looked like the preacher ain't doing nothing. <laughs> but he's trusted in the co-pilot. Who is also the pilot, Lord have mercy. A pilot don't, don't, don't tell you this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Do you know most of us, uh, when traveling, we just want the best, cheapest ticket? Somebody tell the truth. When you're trying to book a flight, you, you know, you're not looking for specific seats. Us, especially, I know y'all not dark as me, but <laughs> blacker people. Yeah. We go online, and when we look for a ticket, we're looking for a ticket, uh, and we're looking for the price. Yeah. I found out that the earlier you travel, God talked to us. The cheaper the flights, the smoothest place on the plane to travel is sitting next to the wings. God, talk to us. Yes, yes. If you want a smooth flight, ask them to put you close to the wings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Y'all get that when you get home. The roughest place to travel is sitting in the back. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I sit in the back, I ain't talking about nobody here, but what I'm saying, if we was to make this a plane this morning, all right, all right. <laughs> and if I wanted smooth, safe travel, uh, in the back would not be the place. Right. If I wanted to really, I'm going to tell on error. <laughs> when we used to go to the club, we didn't go to the back. We should come on up front. Where was that? Lord, talk to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But sometimes we have this mentality that uh, I'm going to stay in the back. But God wants us to know, as he said a few weeks ago, it's time for us to come up higher. Yeah, yeah. And it's not about where you sit in this place, but it's your thought part process. I always want to be in the back of something so I can watch this one and watch that one. Well, when you board a plane, you need to know that you got to really trust the pilot, which you may never see. Uh, uh, on this plane, on this plane, uh, because this plane has a destiny. Watch this. Uh, we're going to Atlanta, y'all. Yes, we are. We all loaded up going to Atlanta. That's our destination. We all loaded up in Beesville. I know y'all got some wondering minds right now. We're painting the picture. We loaded up in Beesville. And this flight, Lord have mercy. Uh, uh, they tell us when we book the trip that Atlanta only takes this long. But some things happened on the way. And now, we didn't get to Atlanta as fast as we thought. Uh -huh. And between uh, Atlanta and Beesville, we're going to go ahead and say we had to go through uh, Gainesville and a few places like that. And, and we had to make somebody say a connect, collect, a connecting flight. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. And on the connecting flight... Uh, I'm going to talk about error again. Error wasn't on the flight in Beesville. Lord have mercy. Terrence wasn't on the flight in Beesville. But we got on the flight in Gainesville. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah. And there were some people God talked to us that, that, that started off in Beesville. But, but when they found out that it was going to be a connecting flight, they got off in Gainesville, Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and now uh, when you were used to sitting beside that one, now you got to get used to sitting beside people with gold teeth and tattoos and bald-headed, light-skinned men because uh, they're going to the same place. God talked to us. Yeah, we had got so used to sitting beside certain people, but because this is a connecting flight, and on our booking passes, boarding pass, you can see we have the same destiny. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. So, so we got Brother Gamble and Sister Gamble that done boarded the flight. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping on the plane. Right. Shouting on the plane. Because they don't got to... Destiny Airlines, yeah, 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 and see, 
Sometimes you may not understand who's on the plane with you or why they ain't sitting down and reading their iPad. You don't know what they came through to get to that seat that's sitting beside you, but they have arrived, Lord have mercy, yeah, at Destiny Airlines, and they found out that I got a paid for boarding pass. Yeah, take one. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we don't know who's going to get on the plane, but you still got to trust that the plane is still going to get you to your destiny yes yes but Wesley let me talk a little bit about Wesley yeah uh Wesley Snipes yeah y'all know him yeah 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 oh Ray Lewis junior back there in the booth yes yes there was a, a movie in 1992 called uh Passenger 57. Charles Kane, uh, what's this man they called on their reign or, uh, on the movie? He was a terrorist. Mm -hmm. Yes, and he wanted to hijack this plane. Lord, talk to us. Uh, and, 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 yeah, yeah. Wesley uh, was hired, yeah. Mm hmm by the FBI to work on these planes, yeah. And sit back there in the booth and make like he's just doing video. Yes, yes. Uh, he couldn't come on the plane with a badge or the, uh, uh, the terrorists would have known that, uh, yeah, this trip here, yeah, we might not be successful in, in hijacking this. So, 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 neat. Yeah, y'all finna tell y'all about New Jack City. Y'all do know Wesley played in that too long. Yeah. But passenger 57 uh, goes to the restroom. Mm -hmm. And when he goes to the restroom and the plane has backed away from the gate, all of a sudden, Charles Rain or Kane uh, steps up and he gets his gun and he shoots a passenger mm -hmm. immediately to send a, uh, uh, a thought pattern to drive fear in the other travelers come on, come on, come on, come on. that he has a no nonsense mentality that I'm going to take over this plane yeah. watch God and those that were employed uh, by the airlines that, that we thought when we were watching the movie, the flight attendants, uh, they were terrorists also. Mm -hmm. The one while they were sitting in the gate, God, talk to us. Sitting in the gate that was serving them their drink, being nice. Yeah, yeah. They were hired by uh, uh, the terrorists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And, 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 and though when I was sitting down and I wasn't going nowhere, they were giving me drinks, yeah, and, and giving me food, yeah, yeah. I didn't know then that they were working for the terrorists, yeah, yeah. And so Wesley goes to the restroom, yeah. I'm just trying to get you to see this movie right now. And when he goes to the restroom, he hears gunshots going off. And he makes a call off of the air phone. And he alerts air traffic control, yeah that somebody has hijacked the plane. Right. And Wesley immediately kills one of the terrorists. Uh -huh. And so y'all won't think you just came to hope to hear about a movie. Uh, I gotta speed it up for you. Uh, Rain finds out that Wesley is trying to get this plane on course. On. Wesley goes down and cuts the fuel, Lord have mercy. Because if the fuel run out, the plane can't fly. Mm -hmm. And they have to make, uh, they need to make an emergency landing. And once they land, yeah, a sheriff, <laughs> yes, does not believe that uh, John Cutter, that's his name, works for the FBI. That's Wesley's real name. John Cutter. And so Wesley, John Cutter, is trying to explain 
that I'm here to help you, God. The sheriff does not believe it. So by that time, the terrorist, the parking lot prophet, doesn't drop C in the sheriff and told the sheriff that he's one of us. Good Lord. Oh, yeah. And so now the terrorist says, fuel the plane back up or I will alert my assistants to start killing the passengers. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, we're going to see this. And the FBI comes in, comes in, comes in. And now they release John Cutter. John Cutter gets back on the plane. And he has to go through warfare to take back over this plane. Y'all know. I didn't come to talk to y'all about no plane. Come on, preacher, let's go. Amen. Mm. Y'all do know that, right? Yeah. Y'all do know this is a trailer, yeah. but we're using it as an aircraft. Mm-hmm. John Carter has to fight this man very hard. Because this man want to take over this plane at the cost of the passengers. Wesley John Cutter has to fight for every one of the passengers because they have a destiny. So we asked, where is your destiny. And I pose this question to Brother Ray. I say, Ray, if you were in an airport and I was in an airport and uh, we didn't know that we both were going to meet up at the airport, somewhere in the conversation, you're going to ask the other person, where are you headed at? And that's my question today. Where are you headed at? Because you need to know your destiny. And in you knowing your destiny, you need to know that there are some spiritual hijackers. Yeah, let me, let me prove it to you. Y'all just think I'm talking about the movie. Jeremiah said that in this chapter right here, there were some false prophets. Uh, uh, they were going to say that the Lord said but the Lord had not said and so what they were trying to do was pervert what God had said to get the people to hop ship Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ain't ain't nobody in here no spiritual hijacker or or, or no false prophet I know know it ain't none of that in here but in verse 8 let me read this he said for thus said the Lord of hosts the God of Israel let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you yeah. that's riding on destiny airlines right, yeah yeah that's a part of flight 57 right. basically he's saying don't tune your ear to them yeah 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 they're saying they're saying they're saying they're let, let me read it because I, I know y'all don't believe me he said uh they be in the midst of you, this Jeremiah 29, verse 8, to deceive you. He said, neither hearken to your dreams, your own personal dream, which you have caused to be dreamed. Now, can I stay there for a minute? There's some things that, Lord have mercy, that we think of so much that we'll dream about. I'm I'm, going to read it again, and then I'm going to tell you something. Neither hearken to your dreams, which you caused to be dreamed. You talk about these spiritual hijackers, right? For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, 
saith the Lord. This very week, and I didn't put this in my notes, I shared this with my wife, my co-pilot, Sylvia. I said, Sylvia, I had a troubling dream. Mm -hmm. And I say, in the dream, I was going across a field. Yes, yes. And in me going across the field, uh, there was all kind of gates, and God was giving me the clearance to go across the gates. And, and as I'm going there, just trusting God, just going there and just going over this and going over this. And I know it was God that was allowing me to go over these obstacles. And I got to a place when I was about to enter into another place, yes, and when I lift up my leg, I felt a strong evil presence. And I sensed that somebody had released something to harm me. I wasn't going to tell this, but I got to tell it. And uh, I, I looked in a window, good Lord. And when I looked in the window, there was a lady sitting watching me, but not saying nothing. And, and as I lift my leg up, there was a dog with his teeth out, and he tried to bite my ankle off. And the lady in the house, knowing that was her dog, and let me, let me, I, I hope y'all know that this ain't no dog that was in this dream. It was a demon. Uh, didn't do nothing to restrain it because they released it. And the problem was, there's a scripture in Isaiah that said, no weapon that is formed against me won't prosper. And I, I didn't come to tell you about terrorists, but I'm trying to tell you that when those spiritual hijackers uh, try to do things to harm you, you need to know that on your plane as you're heading to your destiny that no weapon that is formed against you won't prosper and that every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, God say I'll condemn. So I, I pulled my foot out of the mouth and I looked back and there was no harm. There was no harm and, and, and so I looked at the gate and I looked directly in the woman's eyes and and she was looking like my stuff ain't working, Lord have mercy. I'm trying to talk to you about the blood now. It, yes, it won't, it won't, it won't work. Yeah, yeah. And so I sat up on the end of the bed and I said, Sivan, God told me to turn to Psalms 124. You say, and you have escaped, uh, yeah, like a bird, yeah, out of a trap. Yeah, yeah. And I come to tell yeah, all of us at Hope, yeah. The reason you have arrived down to this gate today is because the Lord has been on your side, yeah. There's some people that should that told you that you were been out by now, but guess what God said? You can't come out until it's the right time, yes, yeah. You got to understand that there's going to be some connecting flights, yeah. There's going to be some other people that board the plane, yes, but they're part of the trip, Lord have mercy. Yeah, I, I know you understand that yeah the bible say for we know that all things work together for the good yeah yeah the good the bad the ugly people talk about it. he say it works together yeah i know you want to land sister gamma i know you want to land brother gamma but guess what now there are some inclement yes weather conditions so now when you say i'm gonna do this you can't do that because the runway not clear lord have mercy and see, God has to have some people, Lord have mercy, to work the ground so that you can come down, Lord have mercy. And God, that person there is not just an usher that waves you in. Those are those quiet people that are on the flight that are called intercessors, Lord have mercy. Those are those people that will war in the spirit before you get to your place. You may not never meet your best intercessor, but guess what? They're praying you through, yeah, yeah. I believe you are in the place you're in right now 
because God got some grounds workers. Yes, yes. I know you wanted to land by now, Brother Arrow, but God say, I got some people clearing the runway for you right now. You got to trust God that when it's snowing, it's snowing for a purpose. Yeah, yeah. Because some things got to get in place. And because air traffic control know that it's snowing, they, they, they alert other people, other workers to go and clear the runway. Yeah, yeah. So what you need to do now is learn how to follow instructions. What do the instructions say? They say put on your seatbelt. Yeah, yeah. Because we're going to prepare for a safe landing. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah. God said to me this week, yeah. He said, uh, I want everybody to enter in the front door. Yeah, that's why the sign was back there. Yeah. And, and I said, you know what? I must even be a first partaker of that myself. So I didn't go through the back door. I came through the front door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thank God that, you know, once we learn how to follow instructions, we can get to our destined place yeah yeah and we need to know that the passenger and uh, the pilot ain't just making up rules just to make up rules he's listening to what they're saying in the tower yeah 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 a pilot must be committed to listen yes and a pilot lord have mercy does not have the ability to just pull over and park and let you out when you want to get out. <laughs> because you, <laughs> I'll let you finish that sentence. And most people don't know uh, that most pilots fly you while they're tired. Mm. Lord have mercy. Let me, let me, let me break that down to pastor's language. Most pastors mm -hmm. pastor their congregation and leave them while they're tired. Mm -hmm. See, because you book the flight that only takes 50 minutes, Brother PQ, you don't know how many other people that he has had to fly to their destiny. Mm -hmm. He may have been flying from Ghana and you just want to get to Atlanta. Yeah. So he fly. So it's best for you to pray for your pilot. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah. This pilot must have somebody say faith. Uh-huh. Yeah, because he don't have the power to keep this plane up. He just have the know-how, Lord have mercy. Now, where does he get the know-how? <laughs> On his knees. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's it. And in him flying, he has to fly doctors mm -hmm. to perform surgeries mm -hmm. out of state. Mm -hmm. He has to fly, I hope one of y'all can catch this, lawyers to go fight cases. Yeah. He has to fly nurses to colleges. He has to fly family members in. He has to fly teachers in. He has to fly preachers in. Yeah. And see, what I'm trying to get you to see is you are those doctors. You are those lawyers that he's trying to get to their destiny. Everybody that's flying is not going to become the same thing. So, Jeremiah helps us with this boarding pass. Down here at Destiny Airlines. Because you got to know you're going somewhere. The first thing they asked my son was, where are you headed? He told them the Peach Bowl. They said, what city and state? Because some of us need to know the details of where we're going at. So he got his, uh, he got his boarding pass and me and Sylvia, you know, we want to just, you know, take him to his place safely. And 
we down here at the gate and he has a sharpened weakness. He likes to sharp. So we're over here waiting to get him to the gate and he's looking for sunglasses to fly. Simon said, Terrence, where is Freddie? I said, he said he wants some shades. We're in the panic because we're trying to get him to his destination. But he's not in the panic. And there's some people right now uh, that's shopping right now in their mind. And they're not worrying about their destination. And I want to tell you a little story about a young man and an older man. They were out on the boat. They were out on the boat. Come here, Brother Gamble. Yeah, you and Brother Eric, I like to use y'all too. Come here. We got two chairs. Two empty chairs, please. And right now, Brother Eric saying, what he finna do now? <laughs> Brother Gamble is gonna be Brother Elder Gamble is going to be the older preacher. You sit at the back of the boat. Brother Gamble, by the motor. Aaron's not no fisherman. I'm telling y'all. He at the front of the boat. Amen. This younger preacher, just for this illustration, Looked up to this older preacher all his life. And he said, I want to function in the kind of anointing that you function in. Mm -hmm. And so the elder preacher knew he wanted it. And, and he finally, after all this aggravation, took him fishing. And so the young boy is up there on the front of the boat. Say, I believe he's going to lay hands on me today. And when he lay hand, I'm going to walk in that powerful anointing. I'm going to have that same anointing just on one fishing trip. Yeah. And so he just kept on aggravating the old man. And the, the old man picked it up in the anointing, Brother Tor, that the young boy couldn't swim. And he called him back there to the edge of the boat. And when the young boy came back there, the young boy came leaning like this, thinking that the older man was going to lay hands on him. And the older man pushed him off the boat. So, Brother Errol is the younger one that came to get his hands laid on his hand. He can't swim. Yeah. So, he's down there beating the water, yeah. fighting for his life, yeah. fighting for his life. Yeah. And the older man is sitting down, yeah. humming a charge to keep a hand oh. and a God to glorify. Oh. He just back there humming it. He humming it. And, and, and the boy coming up gasping. He's coming up gasping. And, and, and he's waiting on the older man to reach his hand out. Yeah. And so the older man leans over the edge of the boat and, and just watches. But he sees that this boy is about out of himself now, Lord have mercy. Yeah. Yeah. He's out of getting back on this boat in his own strength now. Yeah. And he reaches out and grabs him. And he say, if you don't want the anointed as bad as you want that last breath, Stop bothering with me. He say, you got to want it with your whole heart. And see, there's some people that want to walk in an anointing, but guess what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not that bad. No, 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 no. Just give me the mic so I can pray. Just give me the mic so I can teach. Just give me the mic so I can sing. No, no. But you got to want God more than you want the microphone. You got to want God to the point that I will sit on the boat and not say nothing and just wait for instructions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes I go fishing with a lot of preachers and a lot of them done taught me. And, and one of the things is, no matter how long I've been fishing, I'm always going to learn. And see, because some of us have these frequent flyer miles, been coming to church for a while, yeah. we think we know everything. And that's why the pilot don't come back there and talk to us because he know I got to stay in tune because they think they know everything. And if, Lord have mercy, and if you knew all you think you know, you would be flying the plane. How bad do you 
morning. Y'all can sit on down. Y'all, y'all, y'all leave these two chairs, but y'all, y'all go sit on down. How bad do you want it? That's what God is saying. How bad do you want to get to your destiny? No, I'm going to seek it when I want to seek it. I'm going to seek it when I feel like it. I'm going to pray when I feel like it. I'm going to read when I feel like it. No, no, that ain't how it works. He said, when you seek me with your whole heart, that's when you will get your turnaround. Everybody know your whole heart. What I'm saying is, you know what's in your heart. How much are you seeking God? How bad do you really want God? Do you want that personal relationship with him? Or do you want God to just fix your situation? See, this, this is what I learned in chasing God. I done ran from the police so many times that I know that when they're looking for somebody, they don't waste their time paying attention to what's going on around them. But they fix their eyes on their target, Lord have mercy. And once they get a positive idea of them, they alert, yeah, yeah, dispatch, and say, I see him. I see what he has on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can recognize him, yeah. And, and, and as they're chasing him, yeah. And you know, every now and then, I wouldn't, I wouldn't this be, I looted a few of them. And, and you think you're safe, yeah, yeah, yeah. But because they want you so bad, Lord have mercy. Yeah. They don't see you, but they begin to look for your footsteps, Lord have mercy. And Psalms 104 says, he walketh on the clouds. Yeah. I know you're saying, Lord, where you at right now? Uh, Just look up. He's walking on the clouds. Yeah. He's right over you. Yeah. He's he's right beside you. You need to know that even though I don't know how I'm going to get there, I may have to make a connected flight, but I got to trust God by trusting that he's walking with me. He's talking with me. He's leading me. He's guiding me. Yeah. Yeah. We got to go to our destiny. You need to know that as I'm going to my destiny change, somebody say change is going to happen. You're going to have to go over some towns and some cities that you're not used to. And in those towns and those cities, they may look small, but you need to know he's the Lord of all. Good God. We need to know that as I'm going through this place, that I'm going through this place with purpose. Why? Why? Why do I need to go to the airport. If you ever look on a flight and see some of that stuff that you're flying over, you will thank God for the airplane. Yes. But we just want to pray and get there. There are lessons learned on the way. But are you willing to learn those lessons on the way? Here's this pilot and I'm ready to go. He has to have clear vision. He has to listen and look. He has to keep the glass uncleared from all kind of debris. Because he needs to see what they're saying in the tower. You can't handle And this is not a bigoted statement. None of us can handle seeing what the pilots see or hearing what they hear. Because by the time we hear the message from the the attendants, they have broke it down. I found out this, and I'm not trying to stop nobody from going to the airport. Most planes fly with a destroyed engine. They usually have up to three engines. And it's rare that all three are working. What I'm saying. Most leaders are flying you with a limp. Come on, preacher. <laughs> but you don't know it. Mm-hmm. Ain't God all right? Yeah. A- a- ain't God all right? If you're going to be a true leader, you got to be able to lead even when you got a malfunction. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and Lord have mercy. And you, get, you got to know that I got to stay in tune even with the people on the ground. I, I know I want to get home to my children. I know, I know there are some things I want to get home to. But guess what? God done 
put me in charge of some other people's destiny. So guess what? I can't be so selfish to think about me. I got to think about those that's flying now. Look around the building. Look. Just, just look. Look who's on your plane with you. Everybody look crazy. <laughs> Don't know. Y- y'all have said on the way home, you won't say it right now. <laughs> you think you're sitting by a terrorist right now. You, you think you're sitting beside uh, <laughs> Brother Ray in the booth. But the Lord told them people that I'm going to turn it around for you. But you got to trust me and you got to seek me with your whole heart. Because guess what? Some of the situations that we're in, the devil didn't do it. The devil didn't put me in jail. Neither did God. My choices did. And see, we're so busy saying the devil, no, the devil ain't made me sell no crack. No, he didn't. no. greed did. I know ain't no greedy people in here. And when you get greedy, guess what? That's consequences. And the devil don't never tell you when he's prophesying to you out there in the parking lot that there's consequences in you getting greedy. And impatient. Yes. This is what I found out since I've been saved. Y'all ever looked on TV at a faith preacher? This is a setup. See, they ain't going to answer now. You ever looked on TV at a faith preacher? Raise your hand if you believe in faith preachers. Yeah, believe that God got faith preachers. This is what I'm saying. You know how people say, I don't listen to them faith preachers? Y'all ever heard that statement? Every preacher needs to be a faith preacher. If you got a preacher that's not preaching faith, he's not preaching the word of God. This whole book is a faith book. Now raise your hand and tell me if you don't believe in a prosperity preacher. See, they ain't going to do it now, Ms. Donna. But you know what? God said, I will that you be in good health. I want you to prosper. I want, I want to empower you to prosper. See, but them parking lot prophets at churches and at the airlines, they want to tell you, I get tired of them talking about money. I get tired of them talking about seed. But guess what? You got to sow seed to get harvest. But we're going to go out there and tell you, it don't take all that. Well, if you want to be blessed, guess what? You got to sow something. See, I already know the benediction don't, don't happen now. Because we want money, but we just want to sow prayers. Mm-hmm. Come on, preach up. Come on, Lord. A seed produces after its own kind. That's what it does. If you want to reap love, you sow love. You want to reap peace, you sow peace. Amen. If you want to reap money, you sow money. Thank you. If you want to reap more, you sow more. If you want a perpetual harvest, you sow perpetual. No, what we want, we want to sow a seed for a miracle. But we got to get to the place where we're always putting seed in the ground so we're always seeing harvest. And then you can expect a harvest because you have sowed seed. Yes, God will give you miracles. But we need to mature to the point that I don't mind sowing seed because I believe he's the Lord of harvest and he's going to give me a harvest. And when God gives you a harvest, he blesses you to be a blessing. Don't eat all your seed. My God. Oh, my God. What, he said. My God. what that mean? Yeah, if me and Aaron believe in seed time and harvest, when we watch cars, we can't go eat up every dollar we made. Amen. We're looking for opportunity to sow. We even sow for more work. We release faith. So, so. And expect. So it would be crazy if I pray and say, Lord, I need $10,000. 
Amen. And I burn up all 10,000. Where am I going to get my next harvest from? Because I ain't got no seed to put in the ground. That's a little tight, ain't it? And you definitely don't want to be a crook in here. That's the best way I can put it. All of us know what that is. Pastor Dempsey wasn't able to make it today, but he called himself an ex-robber. And what he did, he just, just, just go rob. And in church, you got some people that just come in and just rob God. Lord, I want to be blessed. I want you to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that I won't have room enough to receive. I want you to rebuke the devourer, but I ain't brought nothing into the storehouse. That's for the crooks. And don't get mad at me. I just changed the version. Crook, robber, same thing. And I know everybody here understands what a crook is. Because when we see certain people walking down the road, go lock your stuff. You know, that's a crook. You know, he'll steal. I wonder how the Lord looks at us when we're coming to his house. I need to lock up my windows now. And maybe I need to lock up my windows because they came to steal from me. And it's not just about money because he also talks about uh, the refiner's fire. How it will purge you. God wants our heart to be purged also. So don't get so tied up and I'm a tied, but I still got a nasty heart. He wants us to have balance. There we go. Amen. Amen. Because you have some big seed sores and, and some tithers that have some nasty hearts. Amen. He said it. He said it in his word. Look at Matthew 23. Ain't none of this in my notes, so I know God wants me to talk about this. He said, you pay tithes with mints and offerings. He said, but you omit mercy and love and things like that, the greater matters. He's talking about daily living. Sometimes the biggest givers could be the meanest people. Not in here, not at Destiny Airlines. Not with our boarding pass to get to our place. But if you want to get to that prepared place, we're going to have to take the right actions on our way. Yeah. Amen. Everybody on your feet. Everybody on your, everybody on your feet. The first time I preached Jeremiah here, I didn't really understand what all God was saying. But God said there were some things that need to be rooted up, need to be plucked down. That's in Jeremiah chapter 1. He, he talks about it. And we got to be ready to go to our destined place. We got to be ready to go into partnership. with others and when those others board the plane we got to trust God enough that nobody didn't get on this plane to hijack this plane and even right now by the spirit of God let, let, me, let, me, let me help the enemy right now the enemy is saying dropping seeds right now say he's just talking about sanctuary the devil is a liar Because God is going to connect us with people that we have never saw before. But they have destiny in mind. And they have gotten their boarding pass to get to that place. And they've showed up at the proper gate. They've checked their flight. And the last thing they need is somebody beside them that can't talk, can't speak. That's looking at them all. Y'all know. And I believe the Lord is helping us in a new season. Yesterday is gone. 2015 is gone. Just count back. It's gone. It's gone. 
And if you're going to move forward, you got to move forward in your mind. You got to depart from some gates that you're, that you're clinging to right now. There's some gates that you want to stay attached to, but if you're going to get to your destiny, guess what? You're going to have to back away from the gate. Yeah, you're going to have to unleash some latches. Take some locks off your mind and off your heart because you're trying to get to a place that has been prepared for you. You're trying to get to your turnaround, but you're still latching on to the gate. And just like a flight sometimes, don't, don't think that this flight got to wait on you. Father, we thank you, God. Father, we thank you right now, God, that we're heading to our destiny in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for your word, God, that you have sent and released into us, God. And Father, I hear you even right now, God, and you've said it over and over. God, you said it to your people in Deuteronomy. You have been here long enough. It's time for you to turn and go forward. So God, I I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God. Father, I pray for a forward mentality, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, that we stop struggling with yesterday, God. Father, we can be thankful for it, God, but we need to know that all things work together for the good, God. To them that love God and to them who are the called according to your purpose, God. We thank you, God, for uh, the connecting flights, God. We thank you for the delays, God. We thank you, God, for all that we've been through to get to this place, God. But God, we're thanking you for our destiny today, God. God, we're thanking you right now, God, for how you're speaking to us, God. And Father, I decree and declare right now, God, and I plead the blood of Jesus over every ear, God, that this word will go on good ground in the name of Jesus, God. That the enemy will not steal this word, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the anointed one, God. That this word will bring forth much fruit, God. Father, our turnaround is here, God. Our breakthrough is here, God. Our double is here. Our reward is here, God. The manifestation of our prayers being answered, they're here, God. Father, we thank you right now, God. We're we're out of the wilderness, God. The promise is right here, God, for us to seize, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, I thank you right now, God. I thank you right now, God. And Father, I pray, God, that you help even the heart, hearts, God, that are struggling and re- resisting right now. God, help them, God, to embrace God. And to accept, God, what you're doing in this season. In the name of Jesus, God. Father, you're well able, God. Father, we thank you that you're the master pilot. You're the master captain, God. And Father, you you have been good to us, God. You have brought us to this place, God. And Father, as we board up on this plane, God. As we board up on this vision, God, to do that which you've called us to do, God, help us, God, to all join in with the groundwork, God, the praying, God, the speaking positive, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Help us, God, to yield to authority in the name of Jesus, God, to to put on our seatbelts, God. And to trust you, God, with our whole heart and not lean to our own understanding. Father, we thank you, God, that we can trust you, God, that you're going to get us to that place. Father, we thank you right now, God. Father, I thank you for the destiny of each and every person in this place, God. Father, I thank you for their goals, their careers, God, that they will arrive in the name of Jesus. Father, every device that the enemy released to to hinder them or God to to get them to doubt you, God, we come against it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray success, God. In the name of Jesus. 
Yes, Father, we've been in a waiting place. But, Father, it's time now to fly. It's time now, God, for us to get up under your wings of safety. And to look to the hills, God, from which cometh our help, God. And Father, some of us are scared to fly, God. But God, you're with us, God. God, you're with us, you're with us, you're with us, and you're mighty, God. Father, I thank you right now, God, that the visions and the dreams that you're releasing in this place, God, will come direct from you, God, in the name of Jesus, God. And even as Paul said, if he preached another gospel, he'd be a curse, God. So, Father, I pray, God, that in this place, God, that this be a place, God, that any word that is released, God, is released by your anointing in the name of Jesus, God. God, season our words with grace, God. Not with speculation, not with doubt, not with fear, God. But full of faith, God, we thank you right now, God. And Father, I pray that you heal the land in this place, God. Heal the broken hearts, God. Father, reach behind the walls, God. The barriers, God, in the name of Jesus. And I don't know who this is for. Yes. The Lord said you can love again. But you're going to have to release your past and release that bitterness. God said, I will restore you. God said, I will restore you. You don't got to live in a life of denial. Lord, have mercy. And I'm going to use myself right here because God is telling me to. I can remember when I got a divorce that I said I would never get married again. And that was out of fear. And I almost missed my baby. That when God turned it around, yeah. he brought healing through her. Father, I thank you right now, God. That God, sometimes you don't just speak a word, but God, you will bring individuals in us into our life to help heal us, God. Father, breathe on us. God, exhale in us right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray, God, as they have their careers, their goals, God, that they write them down so that they can see them, God. And that they lift them up to you and pray, God, that you will give them clear direction, God, that they can be in tune with you, God, so that you can tell them how to travel, God, in the name of Jesus. And I hear God saying, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. You don't have to water down something God is saying to you. God said, it's bigger than that. And all you got to do is believe for God to do it. Father, I thank you for hope right now. God, I thank you for hope right now, God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we trust you, God. We love you, God. And I'm not going to ask nobody to come up, but if there's some kind of way God has dealt with you in the message. Just whatever kind of way, just lift your hands up. Whether it was convicting or encouragement, if God said anything to you, every eye closed, every eye closed. Just lift your hands up. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for those that 
lift their hands up in obedience, God. Not to terrorists, God, but unto your voice, God. Father, meet their need, God. And I include myself in it, God, that you meet us, God, at that place, God. So that we won't wrestle, God, and fight against what you're saying, God. But, God, we accept what you're saying to us. In the name of Jesus. And, Father, I release a word, God, into your people right now, God. Those that are struggling to go forward from past situations, God, from past relationships, God. Father, I decree, God, that they shall go forward in the name of Jesus, God. As they depart from those situations in their mind, God. Father, help us to let it go, God. Father, help us not to live, God, chasing destiny with bitterness and unforgiveness in our heart, God. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, God, that you will heal all hurt right now in the name of Jesus, God. Father, I pray, God, that we don't live a life, God, of opposing to be something, God, why we're struggling with denials, God, of feelings that we're feeling, God. Father, I pray, God, for your anointing, God, that you will move and destroy every yoke and remove every burden right now. In the name of Jesus, I hear God saying it's okay to cry. I hear God saying that it's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. God knows your pain. And that pain has pushed you to this place. To get on this plane. You got to make up in your mind. That I got my boarding pass and I'm going forward. And sometime when you get on a plane, you can't tell everybody where you're going because they can't handle it. And you can't take everybody with you because you have paid for that pass you're carrying. Father, I thank you right now, God. For your anointing right now, God. Going into every crack, every crevice in us right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, release grace even like an ivy flows through veins, God. And sometimes the doctors got to reposition them because there's some hard places, God. So, Father, whatever it takes. Father, I thank you right now, God, for peace of mind. Peace in this place. Yes, God. The Lord says as you travel, there's a place of peace that you can rest and trust in. And this is not about the person but there's a song Juanita Bynum used to sing, that you are my peace. Yeah, yeah. Ah, God. Yes. God is trying to release peace in this place right now. Yes, God. Yes, yes, God, have your way. Yes, God, yes, God, he's here, he's here. Yes, hallelujah, God. Yes, yes, just accept it. Yes, God, yes, God. Yes, God. And if you could just wave your hand, just... This way. Yes, yes. Yes, God.
And the Lord was just saying that that's what some of us just need, just some peace. Right in the midst of a storm, God say, peace. Just peace be still. You ain't got to look like your storm. You can have peace right in the midst. You ain't got to look like all you're going through in your mind. It doesn't have to be on your face. You can walk through it in peace. And Father, I thank you for your peace, God. Father, I thank you for your peace right now, God. And I thank you how you've released peace into us, your people, God. And Father, while you're adding peace, God, restore our joy, God. Yeah. Restore that joy, unspeakable joy, full of glory, God. And some of us just need to just breathe again. And just think about that young boy that was out there, he just needed to get to the boat and sit down and just get his breath back. Because what he know what he had just went through and the Lord is saying, just allow my peace to rest in and on you so you can get your breath back again. I know it was hard. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to go home in peace and let God say he's allowing you to breathe again. He's giving you your breath back. He said he's giving you your breath back. Father, I thank you right now, God. And Father, I thank you, God, for fulfilling that word in her, God, that you're giving her her breath back. Not in spurts, but God, you're giving it all back to her, God. In the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God say your spirit ought to be leaping right now. God say your spirit is going to start to leap in you again. He's giving you your breath back. And if you want to let it out, he said, you can let it out. You can let it out. Yes, yes, yes. And all over the building, all over the building, if you need to let something out, this is the best time. This is the best time. This is the best time. Father, we thank you, God, for giving us our breath back, God. We, we almost died in the wilderness, God. But, God, you've given us our breath back, God. God, we almost said we should have stayed back there, God, but the devil is a liar, God. You've given us our breath back, God. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, impart that, God, to all your people, God. Our breath coming back again, God. Revive us, God. Revive us, God. Revive us us God all over the building God revive us God revive us God revive us God in the name of Jesus God revive us revive us God revive us God I speak God to dead spirits right now God and I command a revival God in us in the name of Jesus God I command a revival in us God in the name of Jesus God Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we celebrate you, God, for the turnaround, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. 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 All you got to do in this place is draw on him right now. Whatever you need, he said, I'm dispersing it right now. 
I'm pouring it out right now. Whatever you need, whatever you need. There's some things you can't tell somebody. God said, I heard you cry. He said, pull on me right now. Pull on me right now. Pull on me. Yeah, yeah. Pull on me right now. Yes, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And if you feel like you don't need nothing, stand in the gap and pull on God for somebody else. Right now, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray you save all of our kids, God. God, I pray you save all of our kids in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, God, that all of our kids get to know who you are, God. In the name of Jesus, right now, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God. Right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now. God, encompass this place, God. Yes, God, break through any resistance right now. In the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Break through any resistance right now. In the name of Jesus, God, shift things, God. Invade God right now. Ha, ah, God, in the name of Jesus. Ha, te da bo sata. He, ba bo bo shata. Te da da bo sata. He, ba bo shaka. Te da da bo sande. Yes, yes, he's here. He say, release it, release it, release it. Yes, 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 yes. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Yes, yes. As you release, he's gonna pour it to you. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, break every chain right now. Anything that's hindering us from departing, God, to get to the place of arrival, God. God, break those chains. Yes, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here for you. He said, I visit you. He said, I come see about you. He said, when you call, I come see about you. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Now is not a time to play. Now is a time to, to pull on it. If you want to come out what you're in, he say, pull on me. He has the key. God. God say this week, you can write it down on the back of your boarding passes. For those of you that pulled on me and pulled hard, you're going to see drastic changes this week. And they're going to come by the power of God. This very week, you're going to see the handed work of God in your life. You're going to see God turn things around for you. You're going to see... God turned things around just for you because he's going to favor you openly. Mm. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I want to stop, but God said he ain't through. God said some have not released yet. Yes, 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 yes. God said there's water flowing all through the building. Yeah, he said there's living water flowing all through the building. All you got to do is step in. Whatever you need, he said step in, step in. Step in, step in. Step in in the name of Jesus. Father, I plead the blood right now, God. God, I plead the blood right now, God. God, I plead the blood right now. God, I command the devil to loose them right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, that they can step in, God. Step in, step in, step in, step in. Lord have mercy. Step in, God said step in. Step in. If you got to move out of your seat to step in, whatever you got to do, step in, step in. 
Step in, step in. Get wet, get wet, yes. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Our God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You ain't got to stop. Thank you, Lord. 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 You are the Lord of the breakthrough. God say, I hear you. God say, I hear you. You ain't got to run from it. I hear you right now. His presence has shifted in here. Whether you know it or not, God has shifted his presence in here even in a different way. It's like you're on the clouds now. And the last thing I learned when I was looking up a pilot, say a pilot's skill is not determined how he fly, but how he can land. How he can come out or what he just went. 